Life Audio. Teach Us to Pray is brought to you by Life Audio and is a part of our Faith Toolkit series. For more inspirational, faith-affirming podcasts, visit lifeaudio.com. The new year always represents a season of change. People are often thinking about their goals and resolutions and how they want their life to change for the better. It's good in these seasons to keep prayer a priority to make sure that God is with us and that we're inviting him in any changes that we are planning. That's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to talk about some signs that one, God is actually moving you in a new direction and some prayer points that you should always include in your prayers when you're praying to God about changing your circumstances. This is Perseus Poku, host of the Sound Reasoning Ministry podcast. Learn how to share and defend your faith by listening to us weekly. Subscribe at lifeaudio.com. Welcome back, friend. You are listening to the Teach Us to Pray podcast, where we teach believers practical and real life tips on how to grow your faith and relationship with God through the power of prayer. I'm Christina Patterson, host of the Teach Us to Pray podcast and founder of Beloved Women, where I encourage, equip and empower women of the love of Jesus Christ and the truth of God's word. As I shared with you in the intro, new beginnings like a new year as we are in right now, often get us thinking about what needs to change. As we reflect on the previous year and what we accomplished or what we didn't accomplish, we have more wisdom to think about changing directions, to think about doing things differently. And with anything in our lives as Christians, we want to make sure that God is in the driver's seat of our lives. And so we don't want to go anywhere where God isn't directing us. So I want to share with you just a few signs to know that you're actually in a season of change and that God is redirecting you. Just because it turned January 1st doesn't necessarily mean that everything in your life needs to change. Some things are good and need to remain the same. And some things do need to change. Sometimes you do need to go in a new direction. But it's important for us to have the discernment to know when to do what. We can look at the changing seasons every year to know that nothing lasts forever and that life consists of cycles and seasons. Ecclesiastes 3.1 says, For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. The chapter then goes on to describe different types of seasons that we may experience. A season of joy or a season of mourning, a season of war or a season of peace a season of building up or a season of tearing down. There is a season for everything, but no season lasts forever. So it's important to seek God in prayer to know when we are to move from one season to the next or when we want to pray. So I want to focus on not each season that we may face, but seeking God as we transition from one season to another. So here are five signs that God may be moving you in a new direction. Number one, doors are closing. The first sign that opportunities that you once had are closing, and that's a sign that God may be moving you in a new direction. When I left my job at the Department of State to stay home with my daughter, I didn't think being a stay-at-home mom was going to be a long-term season for me. However, once I started to look for jobs to get back to work again, every door shut in my face. Opportunities that I knew I was qualified for and more qualified for actually were rejected. I was rejected for those jobs and I wasn't even getting that many interviews. And so as I settled down from my search to really just seek God about the matter, he revealed to me that the transition into being a stay at home mom was going to be long term and that my season of traditional work was over for a time being. 
And it reminded me of Jonah, who was called to preach to the Ninevites, but he decided to go in another direction. You may have heard the story in Sunday school. Every step he took out of alignment to God's will was met with opposition and consequence until he was swallowed by a big fish. So don't get me wrong. Opposition and closed doors don't always mean we shouldn't go in that direction. And we'll discuss that a little bit later on in the podcast. But sometimes God will use closed doors to push you in new directions to show you areas where he wants you to move and adjust. And so you'll find that there are places where you once had favor and he'll remove that favor to adjust your path towards his final will. The second sign that God may be moving you in a new direction is that you are outgrowing the season that you're in. Just like my kids outgrow their clothes and I have to get them new clothes, our outgrowing in one season may mean that it's time for us to move into a new season. We go through this type of transition all the time in my ministry, beloved women. Most recently, we've grown and it became apparent that we needed to update the beloved women app to meet the needs of our growing audience. Now, this was a leap of faith because app development, I will tell you, is so costly (laughs) and upgrading an app costs even more. But we got to a point where if we stayed where we were, we wouldn't be able to grow. So if you find yourself in a season where there's really nothing left for you to learn and there's no room for you to grow, that may be a sign that God is transitioning you to move and to a new season. The third sign that God may be moving you in a new direction is that God's provision has moved. I think of the prophet Elijah, who God called to hide by a brook while God miraculously provided for Elijah in first Kings chapter 17, verses one through seven. As the time came for Elijah to transition to a new season, the brook ran dry and God told Elijah to live with a widow and her son and that God would then provide for Elijah there. Sometimes God will take away his provision in one season to push you into the next season because he knows how comfortable we can get and how we kind of just like things to stay the same. Sometimes being uncomfortable is the only way we'll be motivated to move. When my husband and I moved to North Carolina from Maryland, we stayed in an apartment, but we wanted to buy a house. We wanted to buy our own home. But when we sat down and looked at the finances, we concluded there was no way that we would be able to afford a home anytime soon. So we let the idea go. But soon after that, I remember getting into bed one night and God just really placed a desire on my heart for our own home. So I prayed about it and I just said, you know, God, if this is your will, please make it happen. Even though in the natural, it just it was not adding up how it could happen. But other than that, I had no intention of taking steps towards getting a house. I just prayed about it and I went to bed. Now, my husband was working night shifts. And so I woke up the next morning after that prayer and When I heard him come through the door, I remember thinking to myself, oh, I'm so glad he got home safe because I heard like this heavy rain, like the heaviest rain I had ever heard. And so I thought to myself, oh, I'm so glad that he got home through, through this rain. And then all I heard was my husband say, Christina, and I jumped out the bed and I opened my bedroom door and there was water gushing from the ceiling. It was not raining outside, y'all. It was raining inside our apartment. It looked like the Amazon rainforest in our apartment. And there was water everywhere except my bedroom, which by the way, my daughter came into my room that night. So she was in the room with me that didn't flood where every other room in our apartment had water in it. And so the apartment above ours had a pipe burst and the water flooded the entire apartment above ours and so no one was in that apartment so it was just flooding and flooding and eventually it the water just fell down into our apartment overnight now 
<laughs> we could not live in that apartment anymore. And so that situation really pushed us to reevaluate our home search. And we actually ended up finding a home that we were able to afford. If it were not for that flood, we would have stayed in that apartment. But God was transitioning us and we learned a valuable lesson. As God moves, his provision goes with you. Summer might be over, but that doesn't mean you can't have fun stuck indoors this winter. If cold weather is getting you down, a thermo spa hot tub is the solution. Aches, pains, and stress melt away under those powerful, soothing jets. Sleep better on a cloud of bubbles. Call 877-861-4672 now and save $1,250. Limited time offer. Call 877-861-4672 now or visit thermospas.com to schedule a free on-site assessment. What do you do when the world around you is falling apart? It's amazing to me how many people are breathing air. They're going about their business and doing the things you're supposed to do. But if you really ask them, they know that on the inside, they are spiritually and emotionally and relationally dead. If we're not careful, all of us can experience that death. When what we need to do, even as the world around us is falling apart, we need to learn how to march when it would be easier to stay where we are and die. Join me each week on the March or Die show as we discuss that and so much more. The fourth sign God may be moving you in a new direction is that you're afraid. (laughs) Fear can represent a lack of trust in God, but because we're usually afraid of change, fear may be a sign you are in a transition season. Now, we don't give in to fear. We push forward anyways because that is what God calls us to do. Before Joshua was called to transition God's people from wilderness living to conquering the promised land that God gave them, this is what God told Joshua in Joshua 1 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. When I'm afraid of stepping out, I know that sometimes means I need to move because it then serves as an opportunity to be strong and courageous and build my faith muscle. God will intentionally move us in a direction to do something or be something that we know that we can't to develop our faith. Almost every time the seasons change, and I live in North Carolina where we experience four seasons in one day, my children's allergies will start to act up. The weather and pollen changes trigger an allergic reaction. And so I always try to make sure that I have the necessary precautions in place to take care of their allergies when I know seasons are about to change. Fear is like our allergic reaction to the seasons changing. It doesn't mean that we don't go in the new direction, but that as we take steps from one season to the other while trusting God, our fear will eventually be replaced with faith. And the last sign that I want to share with you before I talk about specific prayer points to pray before you make a move, the last sign that God is moving you in a new direction is that God told you to do it. He told you to make a certain move. Now, we might hesitate in fear and disobedience because we don't know how it will work out or we just don't want to do it. (laughs) But not every move needs to be some miraculous sign in the sky. And honestly, most of the time it won't be. Still, we will look for all kinds of signs and confirmation before we move when God has already told us what to do. So we're waiting on God for a sign and he's waiting on us to obediently do the last thing he told us to do. If God said go, then that's the only sign that you need because... Where God guides, he provides. As you sense God guiding you and moving you into new seasons, there are two things that I want you to make sure that you are in prayer about. Number one, that God is ordering your steps and that you are in alignment with 
his will. As you take steps forward, it's easy to get off track as you're moving. And so you just want to make sure that each step along the way is directed by God and praying that prayer. God is faithful to answer to make sure that he's leading you. And then second, you want to make sure that you're praying for God's protection and his ultimate purpose is fulfilled. And so as we move in obedience with God, and we know that we're in the jurisdiction of his purpose, we know that we're covered by his protection. And so we just want to make sure that we're in prayer about the moves that we make so that we're covered by God. Before we go, let's pray together about making new moves this year. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for allowing us to see another year. We pray, Lord, that you will order every single one of our steps like your word says that you will. And we trust you that you will, Lord. And we pray that that trust is evidenced in our obedience to you. When you say move, Lord, give us the strength and faith to move, Lord. And when you say stay, Lord, give us the patience, Lord, and the trust to stay. Lord, we don't want to go anywhere where you are not, Lord. And we thank you for covering us wherever you have us. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Did you know that God made us beautifully different even in the way that we pray? That's right. Your prayer personality is the unique way that you are most likely to communicate with God. And knowing which of the three prayer personality types you have can equip you to hear from God more clearly and overcome any obstacles to your communication with Him. I invite you to take my prayer personality quiz to learn how you best hear from God, how you most likely connect with Him in prayer, and just to have a little fun. Take the quiz now at prayquiz.com or find the link in the show notes for today's episode. It is my hope that today's show has provided you with insightful and helpful tips on how you can pray. We have so much more to talk about when it comes to prayer. So I hope that if you were encouraged by today's episode, you will share it with a friend and subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes of the Teach Us to Pray podcast, where we will continue to learn how just like breathing, prayer can become a natural, consistent and life giving part of our everyday lives. Until then, be sure to connect with me at BelovedWomen.org and join me on the Beloved Women app for unlimited videos to grow your faith, learn God's word, and encourage your soul. Available now in the Apple or Google Play stores. Thanks so much for taking time to listen today. God bless you, and I'll talk to you in the next episode. Teach Us to Pray is a production of Life Audio and Salem Media. If you liked what you heard today, please take a second to rate and review this podcast in your favorite podcast app so that more listeners like you can find the show. For more faith-filled, inspirational podcasts, visit us at lifeaudio.com. Summer might be over, but that doesn't mean you can't have fun stuck indoors this winter. If cold weather is getting you down, a Thermo Spa hot tub is the solution. Aches, pains, and stress melt away under those powerful, soothing jets. Sleep better on a cloud of bubbles. Call 877-861-4672 now and save $1,250. Limited time offer. Call 877-861-4672 now or visit thermospas.com to schedule a free on-site assessment.